Hello everyone, so this past week I got to spend some wonderful time with this R8 V10 and I decided to do another style of video. Uh, normally I just uh, put together a shorter video and I just show some things that I'm doing on a car but for this video uh, I was planning to do pretty much everything uh, an entire detail consists of so I decided to record everything and just give you guys a voiceover so you can follow all the steps that I actually do when I do the one of these details on my cars. Um, this is actually not my car of course, uh, it's my father's and we've had it for about two or three years now. Um, it had some protection on it when we bought it uh, from the dealership uh, but as you can see now from the beading there's really nothing left, uh, the world just stick to it. The car has only been driven for about 10,000 miles or 15,000 kilometers yet so uh, the paint was actually in pretty good condition uh, so I figured a, a one step polish would do. So I'm just going to run you guys through every step and the um, exact order that I do things in. As you can see I just always start with the wheels and I spray them in with some kind of Iron X remover. I used built hammer in this uh, case. The built hammer remover is, is called Corsol and it did a pretty good job. The wheels weren't that dirty. Uh, as you can see there's literally spiral cups on the wheels, that's how little the car is driven. Um, and my dad was on vacation this week, so and, he, and it was his birthday, so I figured I'd give him a surprise and uh, clean the car up for him while he was gone. Um, so at this point I'm filling up my uh, foam cannon while the Corosol, the wheel cleaner, is uh, working uh, its magic on the wheels. And this gives me like a minute or two to fill up my foam cannon and get everything ready. I actually just foam straight over the the wheels. So the first time that I put ironics on the wheels, I just let it sit and I foam over it. And the foam actually helps clean the wheels even more thoroughly, I think. And as you can see, I'm just uh, pulling out my pressure washer and I'm going to foam the car now. And I didn't rinse the wheels yet, the car is also dry, I didn't pre-rinse the car, so this is actually the pre-rinse with the foam directly on it. Um, I'm using the Magi foam uh, in here, it's a, a soap from the UK uh, pre-rinse foam. Uh, I also put some APC in it in the end, uh, just to strip even more and to really make sure all the dirt came off of the car. This is something I don't usually do on a maintenance wash, but uh, in case if I'm going to polish and clay and really get everything off the car, I, I do it just to make sure everything is stripped and it also removes uh, some of the leftover wax uh, although there really wasn't anything on the car anymore uh, I suspect. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see it but the wheel is still a little bit purple so I didn't rinse the wheel cleaner off so the soap is actually helping the wheel right now to pull everything off and then I'm just going to rinse it and then I'm going to spray the wheel again and then agitate the wheel. So most of the dirt, and that's the same for the pre-wash really, most of the dirt is just coming off already without me even touching the car and that's really what you want because the wheels are chrome and they are pretty prone to scratching uh, as well as the paint. So all of the dirt that you can get off without touching uh, is a good thing because it won't scratch the paint or the surface of the wheels. As you can see here the, the foam is just running off the car and doing its job. Uh, I also always recommend uh, to clean out your buckets very well uh, when they sit in your garage for like a week they collect some dust and debris uh, on the bottom side so always just rinse them two or three times quickly before you put your soap in it. For this wash I was just using some Adams. Uh, Adams has no kind of protection or anything in it, no gloss enhancers or anything fancy but that's just what I wanted for this wash. I didn't want to add extra protection because I was going to polish it and clear the car anyway. Um, I also prepare my buckets uh, while the soap is sitting on the car, so I have another two or three minutes to let the soap do its thing. Um, as you could see in the in the foaming stage, I also put some of the foam lightly on the roof. So I started with that. Um, I also don't do convertible roofs very often, it's like only once a year. But I was going to protect it afterwards, uh, as you can see in the clip here. So I did want to put some... Uh, I did want to get it totally cleaned, uh, to put a protection on it. Uh, and as you can see, I just instantly rinsed the roof because, because I don't want uh, the soap sitting on the roof for too long. So it was just on there for like one minute, agitated it and then fully rinsed the car, starting with the roof. And as you can see the roof is just really wet, it doesn't repel water, it doesn't repel dirt, so it really could do with some protection. Um, I didn't only rinse the roof or rinse the entirety of the car, um, so this takes off 
as you can see on the wheels right now all the dirt comes off together with the iron remover uh, that colors purple um, and also most of the dirt of the car comes off you'll see a shot in a second on the front number plate uh, where just most of the bugs and all the debris that's just loose but um, it will still come off so when we go to contact washing uh, this dirt isn't between the wash mitt and the actual paint so it won't scratch uh, these were some harder uh, tar spots on the wheels and um, iron deposits that I used uh, Iron X tar, no, Iron X paste on uh, so this is a paste that really sticks to the wheel and you can leave it on there for like 10 minutes and as you can see it really uh, is very concentrated and removes those uh, harder spots um, at this point uh, I didn't record it but I already re-sprayed the wheels with some more uh, iron remover and while that's uh, working for a second time I use a tire brush and some all-purpose cleaner to degrease the tires um, and during this time the Iron X uh, has some time like 2 or 3 minutes again to uh, work on the wheels um, after this I'm actually more thoroughly going to clean the wheels so I started off by removing those uh, harder bits that I just showed and as you can see there you go they just the lower one is still on there and now it's gone so it really works the, the paste uh, is a really great product for those harder uh, contaminants to remove them and if it's it's not hot outside you can really let it sit for like 20 minutes without uh, issue so um, then I just cleaned the, the face of the wheel and the barrel of the wheel yeah, with an easy detail brush uh, as I said before, the wheels weren't that dirty, so there wasn't much hassle. Um, the wheels just need a quick um, fresh up. As you can see, most of the dirt was on the barrel of the wheel, so it was a. Uh, it's always handy to have one of these easy detail brushes that that help you reach to the inside of the wheel without taking the wheel off. I also rinse the inside of the wheel wells. Uh, I also spray it with some all-purpose cleaner off uh, camera. And at this point, I spray some uh, Gion wet coat on the wheels. This is just a spray on, spray off solution. So you just spray it on the wheel when it's wet. Uh, you don't let it sit and you instantly rinse it off. So there's a cutscene in here, but uh, I only pause for like 15 seconds and then I rinse it off. And it gives you some instant beating. Uh, it doesn't last that long though, but it will for sure last until like the, the first next wash. So that's all I need really much from a product that's this easy to apply. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job. The wheels suddenly have beating where they didn't before. So uh, I'm pretty happy with this product uh, overall in terms of performance. So this is it for the wheels and uh, all four wheels and tires are now finished. Um, so now I just went on to uh, contact washing. This is just with my bucket. Uh, with Adam's soap in it. Um, you always use two buckets for the washing procedure. One with soap in it and one with just clean water in it. And you reload your wash mitt uh, with soap, then you wash the car and then you first dunk it in the bucket with no soap. So just water, so all the dirt goes into that bucket and then you just reload uh, your wash mitt in the soap again and so on and so on. Uh, and in the end of the washing you will see that the bucket with clean water um, has all dirty water and your bucket with the soap in it has pretty clean water so that's the water that's actually going in your wash mitt and on your car so you uh, have less chance of scratching the vehicle once again uh, at this point I decided the, to clay the car this is just with some clay mitt um, it's pretty easy it doesn't remove the contaminants that much as a clay bar but it's really fast and the car wasn't that pitted with co uh, heavy contaminants but it still felt a little bit rough so this did the job perfectly and it, I did the whole car in like 20 minutes so it's really fast and this was the beading after the entire playing so as you can see there's literally nothing left I, I don't think I've ever seen this worse beading before uh, after that I dried the car and I pulled it inside um, and I used an air compressor to blow everything out of the seams because I didn't want to deal with water coming out when you hit a car with a polisher. Because of the vibration of the pol polisher uh, all of the water suddenly starts coming out of the seams and then the water gets into your pads, uh, into your pads. it often has dirt in it like sand and you really don't want to have the hassle of, of dealing with that so I just took my time and dried it completely. After that I masked off some areas and I did some test sections uh, off camera. So on the right side this was Menzerna 400, FG400 and on the 
no, I mean on the right side and on the left side, it was Sonic's perfect finish. And I always do a better job of picking up things than a camera, so I really figured the Sonic's perfect finish uh, got a better result, more gloss, a little bit more correction, and it was also just quicker to work with. Uh, the Menzerna, I had to work a little bit longer before it fully started breaking down and could be removed. So I decided to just do a one step with a, a medium hard uh, pad, the orange pad from Lake Country and with uh, Sonic's perfect finish and uh, a one step was actually enough to remove like 85% of the swirls and scratches from the car and I figured that that was really everything that was needed on here uh, my dad doesn't care too much about scratches and swirls so I just wanted to start with a new layer of paint uh, if I may by removing um, like a nanometer of paint by polishing it and in my mind it's just good to know that the paint then has a, a completely new uh, clear coat or paint uh, to a bond or wax on and I figured and found out over the years that when I polish a car and then wax it uh, the wax actually has a lot more durability and stays longer on the paint than when I just throw some wax on a car that hasn't been polished right before so as you can see the Sonex Perfect finish really finished you can barely see that any product is on the car still it, it finishes up to a brilliant uh, gloss and you just have to buff off a little bit of the residue that's it and as you can see by my scam grip uh, light, the, the finish is really brilliant. And I like to call this a 90% correction. Uh, there were still some deeper scratches that I didn't get. But overall, this is for an, a normal human's eye, this is uh, pretty close to perfection. So then I just used um, Soft 99's Fuso coat on here. Uh, the reason why I chose it is because uh, it gives really good uh, durability. Uh, it's not expensive. An entire top is like 20 or 30 um, euro a dollar. And uh, it actually performs really well. Um, with just one layer on my uh, yellow Megane RS, uh, I got about 11 months or 12 months of durability out of it, which is what they claim. So I just threw on two layers on this car and wiped it off. And then lastly, for protection, I decided to protect uh, the roof and I did this with uh, G-Technic. Uh, it's a convertible top protectant called I1 uh, V2, so it's the second version. And this is the first time ever using this project, product, it was brand new, so I'm really curious to the results. They just told me to douse it on pretty good and that it's it. And then I just wiped it dry and wiped off all the residue and overspray that I got on the car. So that's pretty much it. The wheels are covered, the wheels are protected with wet coat, the entire paint is polished, it's protected with uh, fuso coat, and the roof is uh, also protected with some convertible top remover. So that's it. I also cleaned up the interior really quick, but I didn't show that on video because it wasn't that important or that hard or uh, anything to show. Um, so this is the finished product. Uh, this was a pretty, pretty quick job, I think. Uh, overall, with the polishing, the cleaning, the claying, everything, the protection, uh, it took me about 10 hours in total, so this is a pretty easy job, can be done in one day if you wake up in the morning and just work uh, until the evening. And this will do and probably last the car for like a good uh, 8 or 10 months and maybe because the car isn't driven that much it'll even last for a full year. So that's it, uh, I hope you guys um, got enough information out of this video, if there's something unclear and you still have questions about something, just leave it below uh, in the comments and I'll be sure to answer it and um, get you guys helped out. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, also let me know down below if you like this kind of voiceover commentary uh, or that you like the normal videos where I don't talk and just put music over it more so I can figure out what you guys like to see and upload the best content for you guys. Thanks for watching, bye. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, please subscribe to my channel. I'm really close to 1000 subscribers right now, which is a really big milestone for me. So if you enjoyed the content, let me know, let me know below <laughs> by subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.